Shishan English Communication in English we're gonna talk about um, how to describe a smell itself. Mm -hmm. So I prepared a few uh, words that you might hear when um, talking about the perfume and you might wonder, mm, how can I, like, how, what, are, what do they mean? And um, how do they describe the perfume? So first of all, the words I prepared will be amber. And amber is to describe the smell and it's kind of a comforting and warm smell with hints of spices and sweetness. So um, you remember the blue bottle, the blue round bottle yeah. from Hermes? So the um, original one is actually an orange one and it's called Ambre des Merveilles because it has amber inside and it's something, um, yeah, sweet spicy and warm it's usually in uh, women's perfume a lot of uh, women's perfume uh, oh really yeah because it kind of um is like yes sweet was not too sweet though it's not too sweet we have another word for the very sweet ones but sweet sweet and spicy so it gives kind of this woman and but without being too um how to say girl like little girl's uh, smell mm -hmm. yeah then um, another word to describe will be like floral so floral is obviously with a lot of flowers inside uh, mainly rose and jasmine so that's the word we use for the very flowery uh, perfume <coughs> um, then we can use um, fresh fresh is for more like citrusy I know when I talk about the uh, top notes I use the word a lot because in top notes you have a lot of like citrus like lime lemon oranges uh, kind of ingredients so this word is uh, correct me if I'm wrong okay when people use the word fresh to describe a kind of perfume a lot mm. Does it also mean that the percentage of the essence, the percentage of perfume oil is usually very low? Um, not all the time, um, but because the uh, when we have, so for example, Eau de Cologne is more with citrus, is a lot of citrusy um, smell, it can be used more for those. Okay. As for example, amber, it's, amber will be more like a, a base note. So it will be in those more like eau de parfum than uh, eau de toilette or um, eau de cologne. Yeah. Okay. So it always depends, but it's true that fresh will be used more often for the those less concentrated uh, perfumes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and it's based with like a citrus, aquatic and green ingredient. When you have this kind of, like when you smell it and you feel like kind of green it will be like you can describe it as fresh okay green yeah. citron spring fresh yes exactly and it can include like um, lime lemon all those kind of uh, bergamot also a lot grapefruit mandarin and even uh, eucalyptus because it's very green when you smell eucalyptus you kind of feel this green feeling uh, but warm, if it's warm, sweet, but mature, it's mm. amber. Yeah, it will be more okay, amber. Okay, thank you. We, we have also other words from this, but it will be like uh, amber, more like amber. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. And as we were talking about amber, so I said amber was sweet, but also a little bit more like spicy and gives this more mature like. But if you want something very, very sweet, we will call it like gourmand. So it comes from French, which means like something sweet and usually like vanilla. It's called gourm gourm. I don't know how to why? say it with okay. the, the English why accent. Why gourmand? Okay. Because um, so, for example, in French, when it you sounds say, like someone who really enjoys good food. It is. It is actually. It is this word, and it's usually when we say someone is gourmand, it means like they like sweet or they like yeah they like they enjoy food. So, I guess because um, it's related to the sweet notes of the perfume, like we have with uh, vanilla, chocolate, caramel, those kind of notes, we'll say gourmand. So it's something very, very sweet. Usually it's more 
is found in more uh, like uh, women's perfume like yeah than for men's the next word I want to introduce is musk. So when you have musk in the perfume, it means like um, it's something more sensual. But it can also, because I think I said it um, before, the musk can be uh, two different. You have the white musk that will smell very um, like fresh and very clean. But then you have the other kind of musk that will s smell a little bit more, maybe like animal-like, a little bit, yeah, <laughs> this kind of, not as clean, <laughs> I, know. I would say. But um, maybe it's also found, it's found in women's and men's perfume, I would mm -hmm. say, equally. Same as a long-lasting uh, smell, so we will use it in the base note. Um, it stays very long. Uh, yeah, as I was say saying, and it can be a little bit sweet, more the white musk, I would say. It, is it true that if we're talking about summer perfumes, mm -hmm. we have less musks? If it's winter perfumes, then it has more musks mm. in it, or not necessary? Not necessary, because as I said, you have those white musks that feels a little bit more clean, that we like in... Um, I would say in summer perfume because it really gives this very clean almost like uh, soap um, smell mm -hmm. yeah so it depends on the kind of um, musk we we use for a gentleman if the body smell is already very strong mm -hmm. should we avoid musk Mm -hmm. Or it all depends. It all depends. I would I would say it all depends on yeah, same as I said before, what okay. you you like and what kind of fragrance your your perfume yeah. chooses you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> some people will find the mask very manly and very attractive. For, yeah, yeah, but the combination can be terrible sometimes. True, but I, I would guess like if you have very strong body odor to don't cover it with perfume but maybe oh, right, right, right. Right. <laughs> i'm sorry that's the worst yeah yes true yeah yeah and then um next one would be oud so oud is a type of oil is extracted from a bark uh, wood and usually is very um used in uh, arabic perfume because they like this smell it's very very strong so maybe not as popular in Asia, um, but very, very popular for um, in Arab perfume. Really? I thought their perfumes are more musky. Okay, but, but turns out oud, to be woody. Yes, oud. Oud is a kind of, so ex, is, it is extracted from uh, the bark of wood. A certain kind or several different kinds? I think it's a certain kind. So oh, technically, really? the real oud, now they do uh, from like uh, synthetic, but the real oud is very hard to get because technically is a, is a wood, uh, a tree that has been infected by a certain type of um, bacteria. Oh, really? And it really is a smell, very intense smell. Okay. And it's from this. So not a healthy tree. Yes. <laughs> but um, to have the real one, you have to find it in nature. Some people, they will infect the, 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 the tree uh, to get it. Oh, they apply the bacteria yeah. on purpose to yes, the tree. Yes, on purpose. So, yeah, but that's not a very good method. But the oud is one of the, I think it's one or the most expensive ingredient in perfume okay. for the real one it can like go up really really strong and even um like some people like to buy the the wood itself and then kind of burn it and it will smell good in the whole house like a inside perfume but it's very very expensive yeah, let's move on to the next word yes let's move on to the, the next word next word will be powdery so powdery is when you feel when you smell a perfume and you have this kind of baby powder or like yeah powdery feeling in those but it's usually used in those older perfume um i'm not very big fan of powdery uh smell because for me um 
most of the time is used with maybe iris or like rose, violet, those kind of um, like ingredients. And this for me is related to uh, old woman's perfume. So I think, uh, I'm not sure, I haven't smelled it in a long time, but I think Chanel number no. five is a bit powdery. It's not, it's not my cup of tea, to be honest. I can't, I can't imagine it. Because powder, it's a kind of status. Yes. But, but you, when you use it to describe a smell, I can't. Um, for example, you know when you use baby powder? Yes. Or even maybe before when like um, a grandmas, they use a kind of powder for the face. It has a smell. It's kind of... Um, Something sweet but a little bit cheap it stays on the surface and then it goes away so be careful if you say cheap because <laughs> i'm of sorry all of the very old perfume have this right? powdery smell like I, i'm pretty sure it put people under that impression yeah so it's not like uh, some people wouldn't say like cheap <laughs> to describe it but yeah um I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's Chanel number no. five and it gives that this kind of like... Gaudy uh, smell. Mm, old <laughs> woman smell, I would say. Oh, like older woman smell. And it's used with a lot of like, um, I think tuberose as well have this powdery smell. Yeah, I think it's called tuberose. And it's, it's found in like um, a lot of old woman smells as well. It's very intense. It's kind of type of flower but it's not um, flowery like I, I would say it's more powdery uh, like anyway it's not a positive word for modern perfumes it depends on each of us for me no <laughs> yeah for me it's not very it's not a fragrance that I like but funny thing about tuberose is um, when I was in Le Labo in France so the tuberose for us French people was very was related to those old women's perfume. But I had a customer, I think from the Emirates or something, and because it's very intense fragrance as well, for him it was a very mainly like smell. And it was kind of funny because I didn't want to um because all the perfume in the Labo they're uh, mixed so uh, no gender and it's depends to each other so uh, like how we um we we perceive it and for me and my colleagues this tuberose i think it was tuberose 40 was very old woman smell but for him it was very mainly and we're like oh yeah it, it is very mainly because you, n you never want to uh um um go against what the customers say uh, say because as we say customer is king and matter of taste for this it is king so uh, so yeah. when he first tried it on you didn't stop him but it's his like if he likes it that's for him and he he loved it and his friend was like oh, this very mainly like yeah but it's kind of funny to think that yeah for us <laughs> yeah. is old woman smell but the combination is is really good yeah the combination is good like for him it was good to him so is i mean like yeah whatever because for example they also like oud and maybe here you people don't really like oud because it's too intense and maybe too uh how to say because i don't want to say like dirty because it will be like a bad like um, the connotation of the word is not very good but yeah it's a bit like a more um not as clean fragrance as the other but some like some people will love it and some people won't like it so it's really yeah i'm surprised i thought woody smell would be very popular here um woody but something light always light uh oh, okay. it's for example that's why um joe malone is very popular here but it's not as popular in for example in france because the smell is very light it doesn't oh, okay. stay as much but light smell are more are preferred here so yeah it's really pre how e people see or perceive the the perfume do we have a very strong woody 
fragrances here? Hmm, uh, there are some, but it's not very, um, I wouldn't say it's not the most popular ones for, uh, for those, yeah. It's not the most common ones. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's why, as I said, that's why Joe Malone, for example, is very um, popular. Even if they have some woody scents, it's still very light. It's always worked in a very light, light way. I'm asking because for me, woody is always clean and musky is dirty. It's I know I'm biased. But yeah, yeah. It, it really depends on how the, the, they work the, the fragrance because some perfumer really do some amazing work and um, I would say I even got surprised. I, I know I got surprised with some of the ingredients because if I see this, I will be at first I'll be biased. I will think, oh, I don't like this one, but then I smell it and I love it. Or the other way around, like I would think, oh, it's gonna smell so good because there is this inside, and then the work they did is completely different. As um, so, when I talk about the labo, they have, uh, for example, the Paris special is with vanilla inside. And at first I thought vanilla will be very sweet because it's usually yes. something very sweet. But no, it was something very spicy and almost like leathery. So it really depends on how they work the, the fragrance, the, the, the ingredients. Because I think usually the word, the ingredient vanilla is bordering on the side of powdery. Um, not so much, I would say. It's not powdery, maybe because they use some other things. They usually use something else inside that give this powdery. For me, powdery will be more iris. A lot of iris okay. inside will mean very powdery. Okay. You, for in, in my opinion, yeah. But same, it depends on how they work the, the fragrance. Yeah. <laughs> And so, talking about woody, that's the last word I wanted to introduce. So woody, we use it in perfume to de describe something like earthy with, of course, a lot of wood or grassy uh, feeling. It can be fresh, but can also be something a little bit more intense. Um, and in woody, you can have like cedarwood, sandalwood, all those kind of yeah. uh, woods. Yeah. <laughs> And that was the last word I wanted to introduce today. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> Language is power when you use it. English and applied communication, Sissing University.